How's everybody doing? Uh, just wanted to put together a quick file to show you how to create multiple tool paths with different tools, save it in vCarve Pro, and then load it onto the One Infinity from start to finish. So uh, on here, I've got a 12 and three quarters by six and a quarter inch piece of MDF that I've already measured. We've gone through and made sure that our measurements are there. It's also three quarters inch thick. Uh, I zero from the top of the material surface. I've just had good luck that way. Um, I also do my X and Y from the left hand corner. You can change that if you'd like. So I've put a couple of different vectors on here. Sorry, I'm not a cinematographer, but I'll show you kind of what we're going to try and do today. Um, with this guy right here, what we're going to do is we're going to just do a quick pocket with this one using a quarter inch tool that's already installed. So if you go up here, and you click the little pocket guy. It's going to ask you some stuff. Uh, first, we want to do a cut depth of an eighth of an inch. Um, we're going to use a quarter inch down cut spiral bit. Uh, on here, you could use a larger area clearance tool if you were trying to do some different shapes that required a little bit more detail. You can use some different size bits. Uh, it's very much a personal preference. Uh, we're going to do the raster. Uh, we're not going to usually change anything in this guy here. And then we're just going to hit calculate. And what it's going to do is it's going to give you a quick idea of how it's going to move the CNC around. Um, if you want, you can click on here. I'm using VCarve Pro uh, version 10.019 on Windows 10. So this is what you'll see. Um, if you click preview all toolpaths, what it's gonna do is it's gonna do a quick render of what it's gonna look like. So that kind of shows you what that piece is gonna look like. And also if you highlight over the top of it, it tells you that it's gonna take roughly three minutes and 56 seconds. And you can see that's pocket number one with our first tool. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a second. We'll go back to our 2D view here. And then we're gonna do a V carve in between these two lines here. So if you collect, select both of these at the same time, they're both pink dotted lines, and come up here and do our V carve. And it's gonna automatically decide the depth for me. If you want to make it a uniform depth throughout the whole thing that of your choosing, you can do a flat depth, but we're gonna use a 90 degree V bit. Some different settings that you could change if you needed to on here but basically you're just gonna click calculate real quick. Now, if I preview all these tool paths, ultimately this is what our piece is gonna look like at the end of it, hopefully. Uh, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you click your tool paths, have them both selected. And then when you go to save your file, save it, it shows you on here the different tool paths that are on there, the different tools. And you can see the post processor I'm using is the one infinity inch. Um, so if you save the tool paths, the selected tool paths, it's gonna ask you to save it. And we're just gonna save it to the top there real quick as a little test file. Yeah, we wanna replace it. All right, now that that's done, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna load up the computer and load up the CNC and get it started from scratch. Excuse all the dust in the shop here, but comes with the territory. So I went ahead and clamped my piece on here already. Uh, I started the carve a little earlier, but my breaker blew, so I had to change the spots where it was plugged into, but everything secured down. We're gonna do this from start to finish. I'm running the original firmware that came on the machine so one thing that I like to do is I do use the joystick. And what I do is I bring my gantry over just a little bit closer to the front left corner. The reason for that is I'm going to home the machine when I first start it. Uh, that's going to find out the limits of the machine and it's going to go up and find its Z. And then it'll come over here. And basically what it's doing is it's finding the limits of the machine right now, giving it a baseline to work with. So it'll come through. Perfect. 
now that the machine is homed, what we need to do is we need to zero in our left-hand corner here, top and the corner. So I'm gonna set this down and kind of give you an idea. So I'm gonna bring it over. And we're gonna find the top. And then we'll find our corner here. All right, let's make sure we're there where we need to be. All right, now that that's said and done, you can kind of see down there, I'm not sure if you can or not, but that's on our bottom left hand corner of where I consider it to be. It's barely hovering right over the top of it, so we'll be good to go. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna zero that. So we're gonna zero all of them, which is this button right up top here. So now the machine's been zeroed to that specific location where we need to start. I'm gonna raise my Z a little bit. So it doesn't start right there. All right, now that that's done, when we go, I use the computer interface, um, the IP address for the controller is 192.168.0.226. That's on my network. It might be different on yours, but once you log into the web interface on here, you can go through and load your file. So I'm gonna do this test file. Actually, what we're gonna do is because I loaded it once already, video that didn't go as planned, I'm gonna make sure that I delete that out of there. So I know I'm for sure starting with the proper file. So let's go choose our test file. And now you can kind of see, it's got a little preview of what it's supposed to look like over here. And what we're gonna do is when we click play, it's gonna do a couple of things. So first it's gonna move our gantry over to the exact spot it needs to be on there. Now it's got a message saying insert tool one and click continue when the spindle is up to speed. So what we'll do is we'll put this guy on and we'll start our dust collection as well. Now what shows on the screen is also what's showing on my computer as well. So when we click continue, So it's cutting the shape that I put on there. You can't really see it because of the dust boot, but it is doing it. Now while it's doing that, you can see the information from the computer if you want. It's basically updating real time. It tells you your progress, how far you are, and all that good stuff. So, once this is done, it'll prompt us to change the tool, and we'll use the probe to get it right.
now that our first tool path is done, it's brought it back over to its X and Y, and it's saying change tool and attach probe is what our message says. So we're gonna shut it off, let it stop spinning, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna change that tool out and put on the next bit, which is a 90 degree V bit. So we'll take this off. Remove our dust boot. And get our 90 degree bit. wrenches on my collet. I don't use this little hand release button because they do break. Right, so now that we've removed that bit, we'll put the other guy in. to attach probe so over here I've got my probe mounted to the side we'll get that in our little magnet and what we're gonna do is we're gonna set it back down and actually we'll take the dust boot back off for the time being so that we can probe this properly and all I'm doing setting this on top. Don't forget your magnet. So we'll, we'll attach the magnet to the collet there. Alright, so now that it's set up, we'll go back on here where it says change tool and attach probe and we'll click continue. Now what it's going to do is it's going to probe down far enough to check and touch. And it's touched. Alright, so we found our spot for us. So we'll make sure we take that off of there. We'll put that back where it goes. Alright, let's put this Z back. Let's put sweepy back on. This is the boot. spindle. So we've removed it. We're going to start our spindle and we'll just click continue. We're going to get one more message. It's going to say click, oh there it is, click continue when the spindle is up to speed. Sure is.
done, it'll return to where it's supposed to. We'll turn that off. We'll turn our dust collection on. And let's take a look at how she turned out. We'll get our remote and move this guy. Just like it showed on our preview. So that's kind of how you take a file from beginning to middle to end and throw it from the machine onto, or your computer onto the machine and carve with multiple tools in your file without having to save it as different files. Hope this helps everybody. Have a good day.